please investigate the tofu dregs construction project, said one netizen who identified herself as the aunt of one of the victims. When the entire roof of a middle school gym collapsed in Chikihar, in Heilongjiang province in July this year. The tragedy killed 11 people, including 10 members of the female volleyball team and a coach. Shoddy initial construction, widely known as tofu dreg buildings, was blamed for the heavy loss of people's lives. According to China Insights Channel, the tofu dreg construction has lasted for several decades. Although people have discussed and condemned the tragic phenomenon, the situation has not been controlled. On the contrary, it happens more frequently in different ways. Let's take a look at some examples. Collapsing Building The collapse of a nine-story building in central China that killed 54 people in Changsha in April 2022 was caused by shoddy, illegal construction and local officials' failure to enforce standards. News reports at the time said the building had six stories but were added up to a partial ninth level. It noted that extra weight overwhelmed the poorly built structure of the original five-story building. At least nine people, including the building owner, were reportedly arrested following the April 2022 disaster in Changsha, which trapped survivors under rubble for up to five days. Shaking Building A landmark Shenzhen skyscraper swayed on May 18, 2021, causing thousands of pedestrians to flee. After the investigation of the 350 meter, 150 feet, Seg Plaza in the Huaqiang Bay Electronics District of Shenzhen, experts said the perceived vibration was caused by a combination of vortex induced resonance of the rooftop masts and changes to the dynamic characteristics of the building. A rectification plan was to remove the rooftop masts and repair damaged areas. After the removal of the masts, the plaza is no longer among the city's 10 tallest skyscrapers, since its height was reduced to 292 meters. However, residents tend to feel insecure. An electronics wholesaler surnamed Wu, who moved out in late May, said, I think no one can guarantee that it can be fixed 100%. I just want to avoid disruption to my business again. A Centiline property agent in Shenzhen said she was not optimistic. The Eseg Plaza could recover its losses. She added, Judging from experience, I think not a lot will stay. It will take a long time to restore confidence. Tofu Dreg Roads A video shows a Tofu Dreg Road in Kaozhou City, Guangdong Province. A man is riding a motorbike on the road. Suddenly, the road cracks, leading him to fall in the hole. The next accident took place in Kidong City, Jiangsu Province. This time it was a white car. Jiangxi province in June 2021 witnessed the same accident. Tofu Skin Buildings Buildings in China seem to be afraid of rain and wind, since if it rains heavily or has strong winds, the nature of tofu dreg projects is revealed clearly, especially their outer layers. The video shows how easily the outer layers of the building fall due to strong winds and heavy rains. That's why these buildings are named Tofu Skin Projects. However, the harmful effects of such construction are manifested not only on the outside, but also on the inside. In July 2021, the government auditorium in Jiangsu experienced serious leaking like a waterfall due to rain. Building Materials Many strange building materials have been adopted in construction. It is easy for the construction inside the accommodation to fall out since it was built of paper. Steel bars are also easy to break. Liquor bottles are used instead of stones, sand, and cement. Bamboo sheets are used to replace steel bars in constructing China's pavement. Some homeowners try to test the quality, and they feel deeply disappointed when sand and soil fall off right away, with just a knock. 
or a scratch. Many studies find out the reasons for the tofu dreg constructions in China. Corruption of local officials is a typical cause. Next are technical issues such as improper earthwork height, the excavation of foundation pits violating relevant regulations, lack of supervision and management, or the violation of safety measures. Or, instead of using cement, contractors utilized other low-quality alternative materials. Despite these reasons, low-quality constructions and buildings are still common in China, causing significant damage to people's lives and social stability. If this situation continues, the people's agonizing calls, especially from the aunt above, will also be in vain since it will become a thing of the past that no authorities really care about. The ceiling collapse incident at Gulo Hospital in Nanjing occurred on the afternoon of November 6, 2023. On that day, a video circulated online showing the sudden collapse of the ceiling on the fourth floor of the hospital's outpatient building, creating a shocking scene. In the video, hospital staff can be seen shouting and inquiring if anyone is trapped under the fallen ceiling while urging patients and their families to leave the danger zone. Numerous onlookers also appear in the video. According to publicly available information, Gulo Hospital in Nanjing, also known as the affiliated Drum Tower Hospital of Nanjing Medical University, is one of China's earliest Western hospitals and is a grade a tertiary hospital. The hospital has been repeatedly commended by the Central Civilization Commission, Jiangsu Province, and Nanjing City as an advanced collective in the national creation of a civilized industry and a civilized unit receiving various honorary titles from the National Health Commission. The ceiling collapse incident occurred on the fourth floor of the hospital's outpatient building, which houses the obstetrics and gynecology department and the gastrointestinal endoscopy department. Currently, it is unclear whether departments such as obstetrics and gynecology are able to operate normally, but according to hospital staff, the network is in a paralyzed state. The ceiling collapse incident exposes vulnerabilities in the hospital's safety management system, raising questions about the safety of hospital facilities. Many are concerned about the possibility of similar accidents recurring, prompting a focus on the safety of public buildings. It also prompts people to consider how to enhance the safety of public building structures strengthen daily maintenance and supervision, and ensure the safety of lives and property. <laughs> Woman breaks stone guardrail, or shoddy construction again, on October 29, in Jiayang, Guangdong, a middle-aged woman was injured when a stone guardrail she was stretching by the river suddenly broke into several pieces. Officials' response to this incident stated, The guardrail's breakage is not due to engineering quality issues, but rather an accident caused by the excessive force used by the resident. The netizen who posted the video claimed that the woman suffered two broken bones.
the video of the woman breaking the stone guardrail barehanded sparked attention and netizens discussed whether it was due to the woman's excessive strength or the poor quality of the guardrail. Some said, is the woman naturally super strong or is it a substandard project? Others questioned, is it shoddy construction or superhuman strength? This is not the fault of the elderly woman, but rather due to the poor quality of public facilities, it suggested that it's a substandard construction. A person could easily break it. This is obviously a case of cutting corners and just sticking stones together, and they'll weather and fall off in a few years. Then they'll have to be redone to make money. On November 12, near Zongsin Elementary School in Kyarutu Town, Yongjia County, Wenzhou City, Zhejiang Province, a four-story residential building undergoing renovation suddenly collapsed, burying four construction workers. It was known that all four individuals tragically lost their lives. Residents near the incident site revealed that the collapsed building was undergoing renovation at the time, with several construction workers inside. Unfortunately, they were unable to escape in time, and many were trapped inside the building. The official announcement from Yangjia County stated that a residential building in the process of renovation collapsed in Yantu Lane. Kiao Tu Town, Yangjia County. Four individuals were trapped, and by 2 a.m. on the 12th, three of the trapped individuals were found, all of whom had unfortunately passed away. Xin Huan News and Kaxin reported that as of 7 a.m. on the 12th, all four trapped individuals had shown no signs of life, confirming that they had all perished. On a fateful day, November 6, in the heart of Huanan County, Within Jiamusi city of Heilongjiang province, a chilling catastrophe struck as the roof of a sports arena came crashing down, claiming the lives of three individuals and leaving two others in agony. This duty officer mentioned that they weren't authorized to disclose information regarding the incident and suggested the reporter get in touch with the county's propaganda department. Regrettably, repeated attempts to reach the Huanan County Propaganda Department went unanswered. Notably, the Yuet Chang Sports Club is an integral part of the Yuet Chang Plaza, a flagship investment project of the county government. The collapsed gymnasium was part of the first phase of the Yuet Chang Plaza urban complex project. The Yuet Chang Plaza project covers a total area of 35,163 square meters and started construction in July 2017 boasting an investment exceeding 400 million yuan with multifaceted features encompassing shopping centers, recreational amenities, and residential quarters. Xinyuan News Agency reported that Building 7 within the complex, housing the Yuet Chang Sports Club, spanned an impressive 3,208.96 square meters with a towering height of 9.5 meters. This structure successfully passed construction acceptance in July 2020. The eastern section comprised a two-story construction featuring a robust concrete roof. In contrast, the western section, which tragically crumbled covering an area of 675 square meters, featured an H-shaped cross-section steel beam roof structure. Since December 2022, the management of this sports center fell under the purview of Xing Yang Guang Fitness Club in Huanan County, primarily dedicated to hosting basketball, table tennis, and badminton activities. This tragic event sent shockwaves through the region, reminiscent of a similar calamity just three months earlier. In July, the northeastern province of Heilongjiang witnessed the horrifying collapse of a school gymnasium in Kikihar where a coach and 10 female volleyball players met their untimely demise. In the case of the Kiki Har Gymnasium, it was attributed to the ill-advised storage of perlite on the roof, which soaked up rainwater, ultimately causing the structure to buckle under the weight. Some may philosophize that every snowflake bears guilt in this tragedy, implying that even nature played a role. However, astute observers point to grave concerns about the overall quality of construction in China's booming industry. If the authorities fail to take swift and decisive action to rectify these quality issues, it is feared that more innocent lives may be tragically lost. I don't want to talk about anything right now. 
I'm just looking at the final results of the paper investigation, said the family members of the victims of the collapsed roof accident at Yue Cheng Sports Club in Huayanan County, Jiamusi City, Heilongjiang Province, to Jiamian News on November 10, 2023. Currently, the families of the three deceased high school students are still gathering at the funeral home to visit their children. After the accident, the developer of the building, he Long Jiang Yuxin Real Estate Development Limited Company immediately came to the forefront. The Tianyansha app shows that the legal representative of the company is Wu Liqiang. The number of employees in Wu Liqiang's real estate development company was not large, all family members. The company did not have the corresponding qualification for construction engineering construction. The usual practice was to be affiliated with another qualified company. According to a 2019 judgment from the People's Court website, the Yijing Shengxi community was developed and constructed by Yang Jinli in 2012 through a company named Xinlong Real Estate. Yang Jinli did not have the corresponding qualification for construction engineering construction. The development of the Yue Cheng Plaza project allowed Wu Liqian to make a lot of money on his books. The Tianyancha app shows that in 2018, Yu Cheng Real Estate's revenue was zero yuan. By 2019, the revenue of this company, with only 15 people, reached 141.7 million yuan. In the same year, the relevant part of the Yue Cheng Plaza complex was completed. By 2020, Yu Cheng Real Estate's revenue although significantly reduced, was still 69.25 million yuan, and in 2021 it dropped to 12 million yuan. Calculated this way, Yusheng Real Estate's total revenue for three years reached 222.72 million yuan. However, strangely, Yusheng Real Estate was officially deregistered on May 11, 2022. For unknown reasons, the burning question on everyone's mind remains, are these roof collapses the result of shoddy, subpar construction practices, infamously known as tofu dreg projects, or is Mother Nature solely to blame, unleashing her fury in the form of heavy snowfall? It's important to note that sports facilities like these are held to stringent safety standards, far beyond those of regular civilian structures. In times of crisis, the public instinctively seeks refuge in these buildings.